open up the questions. Over to the left, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Hey, Chip. Um, hey, what are your just general impressions of the offense coming out of spring, especially at quarterback? We'll look at all 15, so I think, you know, uh, this day is, is a big part of it, you know, because it was the first time they ever got to play. Some of those guys ever got to play in front of a crowd, and it was an amazing crowd. You know, you get 80,000 for a spring game. You know, you could see some of the young guys kind of looking around like, wow, this is different than the indoor. Um, but that's what they have to get ready to play in. So um, we got better from practice one to practice 15. You know, it's still an evaluation through the whole process, but um, it's not something in, in the players, though, too, that we're – we're not making a decision walking off the field today saying, hey, this is the direction that we're going in. We'll, we'll be very authentic and, and look through everything and make sure that we get a really good feel for what it all looks like and then who will best move this offense. That's, that's what our decision is going to be based on. Are you still about the quarterback situation right now? I do. I think we got a lot of guys there. Um, that part's tough, I think, because you you, you, there's guys that deserve reps, you know, and they're all competing for it. So, you know, sometimes you'd like to be, sometimes when you had a guy who was an initial starter, well, he's going to get the bulk of the reps to get him better. But... Um, they capitalized on it. We really rolled them. You know, if you were at some of our spring practices, you're watching all those guys rotate in, rotate out. Um, and as we talk about all the time, you know, the old adage is, is don't count your reps, make your reps count. You know, and we'll put it all together and really come up with, you know, which guy do we really feel is going to make, going to help us move this offensively. Over to the far right, Bill Landis, the podcast, Kings of the North. Hey, Chip. Um, you said when we first talked to you that the, the basis of a lot of your success running the football is just kind of figuring out what your guys do best and then mm -hmm. leading into that. Over 15 practices now, how good of a feel do you think you have for that? And then what do the next few months look like as you try to piece that all together? Uh, really good question. Um, it's, it's interesting because the one thing that I think sometimes makes it tough in an evaluation is what a good front we went against. Um, you know, so for 15 practices, those guys on the other side of the ball were a pain, you know, Jack and JT and Tyleek and those guys. But I know come fall, there's not going to be anybody more happy that we have those guys on the defensive side of the ball because of what they can do. So um, I still think we'll, we'll have to really evaluate that, what we're good at, what we're not, what we got to get better at and what we got to work on. But I think the work we got against such a quality defense was, uh, was really key for us. Uh, over to the far left, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. So a year ago at this time, um, it came out of the spring with still a lot of question marks about the offensive line. Um, and even, I guess, out of last season came out with question marks. What are, have you seen that progress in the time that you've been here? And, and what's your confidence level that that offensive line is going to allow this offense to do everything it wants to do this fall? Yeah, I mean, I've been here a short amount of time, so I didn't know. I really don't have anything to compare it to. So I kind of tabula rasa, come in with a blank slate and just observe it. I think we're really athletic. Um, I think Donnie and... and and Seth and those guys inside are really smart and really intelligent. Um, they allow you to, to be able to make adjustments in game. Um, just talking football with some of those guys, it's like, wow, this, the, these guys are wired the right way. And a lot of those guys have played a lot of football. So um, they can bank on their experience there. You know, I think we, we, we've got about four guys that have played significant amount of snaps, and we've got to make sure we can find out who the fifth guy is. Um, but that's similar to where the quarterback spot is, I think. And I also think in the offensive line, you, you, you're not going to play a 16, 17 game season and just play with five guys. You know, you really have to develop your depth there. Um, there's going to be a, a number two center that's going to play a lot of football. There's going to be a number two guard, whether it's on either side of the ball. There's going to be a third tackle. I think you're going to get tested, especially with this new, in this new playoff format. You really have to think that way. So, you know, you're not looking for five starters. You're really looking for ten starters because you're going to have to you're going to have to probably play ten guys to get when you get through a 16, 17 game season. Over to the right, Austin Ward, the podcast. Chip, I think it was the first play of the game, the T formation and then the reverse, I don't know, spin move with Will Howard. Under, yeah. under, what's the inspiration for that package and that sort of uh, wrinkle with the quarterback? Mr. Hayes, he has a, uh, there's a looming figure around this whole program. You know, we get to go to work every day in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. So um, if it was good enough for Woody. We're going to steal it. We, we're going to do it. We ran some last year. I think we took 21 snaps at UCLA and T been a short yardage formation for us and, and we've done some different things with it but um <clears throat> also i think our players had a lot of fun you know practicing that and doing some different things so um it's a small part of our offense you know we, we will not be in the t 21 times in one game but you know we may get it in some short yardage situations and i think it's come back there's a lot of schools right now that um are starting to do that you know it's really just you're trying to you know, you got a half a yard to get. You know, you're trying to get your big guys in the game. And I think we used three tight ends and, and two running backs in our formation today with Peckard being the, the fullback in that situation. So 
Um, there's a lot of different things you can do in short yardage, but um, a little bit of a tribute to Coach Coach Hayes and and, the, and what he means to this program. Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch, over to the left. Chip, as you look back, now you've been here two months, 15 spring practices. Is there something you feel best about what you've been able to accomplish with this offense? Well, I haven't accomplished anything because I didn't take a snap. But um, I think the most impressive thing since I've been here is how close <laughs> close this football team is. You know, some programs talk about a brotherhood. They're, this is really a brotherhood. Um, our practices, as we talked about how good our defense is, it's they're highly competitive, but they're not combative. And, and those guys really work very, very well together, both the O-line and the D-line, the secondary and the receivers. Um, the competition is the best. It's got to be the best there is in the country, you know, and, and that makes you better. But I think sometimes competition, you know, guys can lash out and it gets really combative and then all of a sudden the fight breaks out and the fight breaks out and, and we're trying to accomplish and get football done. But I think the way these guys cooperate and work together as a group uh, is a special bond and I think you're, you're going to need the, 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 the closest team and the most connected teams are the ones that win. Uh, over to the right here, Andy Backstrom, Letterman Row. Chip, obviously there's been a lot of talk about Jeremiah, but Emeka is the big returner in this group. He kind of reminded everyone what he can do today. What's it been like working with him, and what kind of weapon can he be for you guys? Uh, good point. And Emeka has reminded me in the other 14 practice sessions of what he can do. Special player, you know, and, and, and JJ's a really talented player also. But, you know, I think, uh, I think all of the, the whole group, like Carnell Tate did some really good things watching him this spring. And for all of them, you know, I mentioned it with the offensive line. I, I came in with a blank slate. You know, I had no opinions formed, <clears throat> not that, really just wide-eyed and just observe them. But, you know, that I think that wide receiver <clears throat> is really special. And I, I think there's a bunch of guys in there. And, again, when you have to play multiple, multiple games after the regular season is over, you're going to make sure you're going to need depth like that. And, and the fact that it's you, you feel a little bit comfortable right now that, that we got some guys there that can make some plays on the perimeter. And that really dictates how people are going to defend you, you know. So you got a couple of really good running backs, you know. So are they going to load the box? Are you really going to load the box and leave those guys in one-on-one -on -one coverage? Well, then it's the quarterback's responsibility to, to, to decipher that and get the ball to those guys. So, Or do they elicit double coverage? They elicit double coverage, and now it's a little bit lighter box, and you can run the ball. So um, having too many weapons is a, is a good problem to have. Second row left, Pat Murphy. 24-7 sports. Chip, we've talked a lot about kind of the, the quarterbacks maybe vying for the, the starting spot, but some of the younger guys, what have you seen from them? We got an opportunity to see more of them today than we probably have. What, what's your assessment of, of them as they kind of get into this? I, I always am so impressed with young guys that enroll early and watching how they get acclimated and what they do. You know, when you look at Julian and Ayer and, and JJ, you know, they should be in the hot lunch line of their high school. And, and they're out here playing in front of 80,000 people. And um, they've really progressed when you watch them in meetings and listen to them, and they interpret. You know, So basically the whole concept here is we throw them in the deep end and see if they can swim. You know, this We didn't baby anything. We don't put the install in with, hey, you guys are install. We're going to install this with the older players, and then you guys you know, go sit at the kiddie table, and we're just going to do the – really simple things with you, you know, where they, they get it all. And, and the more they can digest, the more when you're in a room, when, when you're checking for understanding and asking questions and they can spit back to you, the more confidence you have when they get in there with the plays that you can call for them. So um, those guys have, have been impressive. They're still learning. You know, they were the, the, the guys today that were kind of looking around and saying, wow, there's like 80,000 people here along with the offensive coordinator and the quarterback coach because I was kind of looking around because I had actually never been in the stadium until yesterday when we had um, our 14th practice in there. So I played Ohio State once when I was at Oregon, but that was in the Rose Bowl. So I had never been actually in the stadium until yesterday. So I, I, I caught myself when I went into the stadium today looking around saying 80,000 for a spring game. That's impressive. Got time for just a few more folks over here to the right. Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. Given what you just said about throwing them into the deep end, what stood out the most to you about Julian's progression through 15 practices and where he is as you guys head out of spring? Um, Julian is a very fast processor. You know, he, he really thinks very, very quickly on his feet. Like, he, he makes really quick decisions. He doesn't stick on and read. He can progress, and, and, and he sees things really well for, for a young player, you know, and, and not having been exposed to a lot of college defenses, and, and especially what Jim does. You know, Jim. Jim can make. Jim can make a young freshman quarterback um, cry <laughs> with some of the stuff he does. But you know, I never saw that with Jules, and I, 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 that's been impressive. Is his ability to to retain and um, 
you know, him and JJ, they, the, the compliment I would say to them is if you got here and you didn't know what class they were in, you wouldn't say that those guys were freshmen in terms of how they've picked things up and, and you know, sometimes freshmen act like freshmen. But the, the guys who are special, they don't act like freshmen. You know, they act like they're football players. And, I, and those are two guys that are, are examples of that. Uh, far left, Cameron Teague Robinson, The Athletic. Chip, you, you, on the topic of freshmen, James Peoples and Sam got a yeah. lot of run in the second half. And yeah. You talk about how deep you need to be in this era of college football. But as you search for RB3, what did you see from them today? And what is what has their growth been like in the, this, this spring? Yeah, James really flashed early for, for me, not knowing, again, kind of – Let's just take – don't worry about what the background is, where they're from, who they are. Did this guy have this stars, this guy have that stars? It's – they're all Buckeyes and just how they do it. I think James has got really good feel and vision. Um, he can hit things. Um, I thought Sam did some really good things today. Um, TC is another guy who really came along during the spring. And, and we're constantly talking in our staff meetings about depth. We're very cognizant of the fact that the playoff situation has changed. Um, so you have to develop that depth, you know. Used to be maybe have a pair and a spare, is what everybody says. But I, I, I think you may have to have more than that. You know, you're talking about 16, 17 games. Um, you're, you're really going to be tested that way. So I was really happy with, with how those young guys have, have come along here in, in the 15 training sessions that we've had. Uh, over here to the right, Tim May, the Tim May podcast. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, you have not, your own podcast? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. these guys all had like a name next to theirs. Yeah, Yours is your Tim name. Mike show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, That's you're pretty cool. Time, Chip. <laughs> you must well, have some juice if you got you got your name in your podcast. Definitely. Okay. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I like not, it. It's not just a lunch line; it's a hot lunch line. That's what I like. Yeah, it's a hot lunch line. Yeah. Uh, just two quickies. Number one, do you feel compelled to let these quarterbacks know where they stand? You're, you know, yeah. what's coming up Tuesday. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. You know, I mean, where does that go? I mean, in your mind. Yeah, we'll sit down as a staff and visit and meet on it, and then Ryan. I mean, he, he does an unbelievable job of, I think, all our players understand where they fit and, and what, what the picture is, and we'll give them our assessment. This isn't, you know, we're not going to come back, and, but we do it after every day. They know where they stood after practice one, after two, after three, after four. We grade everything. They're getting constant feedback in terms of where we are, and then after 15, which we had today. But but we, we can't do it unless you watch the film and can can really look at the, the things because you may see something, but you're on the sideline. You know, why did he make that decision? Well, I couldn't really see the field safety from where he was. Okay, now I understand why he made that decision. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, but they'll, we'll have meetings with all our players, and that's that's always been the method. So this week during, um, you know, between uh, Monday through Friday, our, we're all scheduled. No one's going on the road to recruiting until after that, but we'll all have player meetings at every position. You know, offensive line, defensive line, linebacker, safeties, everybody. Everybody's going to sit down with their position coaches and know where they, they fit and where we see them. But do you feel a pressure with the, with the transfer portal looming? I mean, you know, you've been a head coach for a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, is that on your mind that Tuesday? Yeah, I think can we're, alter we're, what you we're got? all aware of it. And that, yeah. I'm 100. percent And I, I don't think it's pressure, um, but I think you just open lines of communication, and everybody knows, you know, what what your evaluation was through the the training sessions that we have. Guys, we got to have we got real quick uh, last two questions: Dan Hope and then uh, Rob Aller. Feel like you need to have a starting quarterback named by, and what are the biggest things you're going to be looking for between now and then in determining who that guy's going to be? Well, between now and and whatever then is, we're not allowed as coaches to go back out in in practice with them. You know, in, in college football, you get 15 training sessions in the uh, in the off season, and then they'll go back to working with Mick in the in the weight room and getting bigger, getting faster, getting stronger. They'll have organized activities themselves, um, and they they do a really good job of that. Um, but once there's a football out, like we're not allowed to be there to evaluate and even assess. Um, so they're really, from a football standpoint, are on their own until August. So um, you, you always want to do it earlier. Um, but I also believe every time I've, I've been involved in this is that it kind of happens organically and authentically, you know, because the players know. And if you say, hey, I, we decided we're going to be with Joe, and they all think it's Tim, you know, they know. They're in the locker room with them every day. Players, players understand, you know, who they feel is the guy, and and most of the time, it, it the decision is very obvious, you know, when you just say, hey, this is where we are with it, you know. Um, but there's that timetable thing. I, I don't, I don't, I can't give you an exact timetable on that. So, Rob, Chip, um, you talked about Julian, but typically in your experience, you've done it again, like Tim said, a long time. How long does it take for the game to slow down for, for a young QB? 
I, I think it depends on the individual. You know, I've had some kids um, where early, you know, you were like, wow, Marcus Mariota was like that. I remember vividly second practice and he got to the fifth read in the progression and threw it out here in his big game. And I asked him why I do that all. I asked why because I just want to understand it. And I said, why did you do that? And he goes, I don't know what we call that defense, but there was like a lot of guys over there. <laughs> and it didn't seem like there was anybody over there. But for him to process it that fast, and he was right. And he came back the other day. And that was cover six the other day, Coach. I, I learned what you guys call the coverages. But um, it all happens differently. I've got guys that for two years seem like they're just, you know, they're really struggling. And then the light bulb goes off and you go, whoa. Like, they, they got it. So um, everybody has different learning styles. You know, our job in the evaluation process is to identify those learning styles. So, you know, are they a cognitive learner? Are they an auditory learner? You know, do they do they learn by feel? Is it, is it, is it more uh, a feel guy, you know, a, a more film guy? You know, it's all different, and I think we have to keep poking and prodding. And, 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 and for us as coaches, that's the challenge, too, is what is their best learning style and how can we convey it? Because education, basically, is just a transportation of knowledge. But it really doesn't matter what I know or what Ryan knows. It matters what they know. So um, that's that's always kind of what we're working on and studying and thinking about and kind of where we are and how much can they handle and then how much is too much, you know, because this may be a great play. I agree 100%. But if he doesn't feel it's a good play, then then why are we, why is it in? You know what I mean? And that's that's this whole feeling out process that we're all – they're learning us and we're learning them. So Offenses have identities. So do coaches, really. Mm -hmm. Running quarterbacks, is that mm -hmm. something you've always sort of leaned toward or is it uh, year by year, case by case? What advantages do you like about, because all your guys can run a little bit? Or yeah, I, I think a running quarterback causes problems for a defense. So when, when plays break down, the unscheduled plays, you know, if you just go back to the recent Super Bowl, on that last drive, the two big plays were Mahomes' run. But Patrick Mahomes is not a runner. Andy's not calling design quarterback runs for Pat. But when the defense matches up and plays two man and turns their back to the quarterback, well, maybe the best decision is to take off. You know, the second one he took off, I'm like, he may score. You know, a lot of guys go and they want a hook slide. You know, and, and, and there's times where you have to understand if you do have a running quarterback, and we talk about the best, avail the best ability is availability. You know, you're not lowering your shoulder and taking people on. But we are always looking for quarterbacks that have the ability to run. We're not looking for running backs that can throw. You know, so you're not going to see us 20 times a game we're running the quarterback. And there are people that run it offensive styles and are really successful with it. But with this group we have right now, that's not. Now, they can hurt you with the feet. Will did it when he was at K-State. You know, obviously, Devin took off a couple times today. Air took off a couple times today. Lincoln's a really, really good athlete. Julian can run. But, you know, we're not calling design quarterback runs. You know, you're, you're not going to see, um, you know, I, I tremendous amount of respect for Coach Hayes and the legacy that he left here. Uh, the straight T is about as far as we go. We are not going single wing. <laughs> so we are not going to snap it and run quarterback ISO and quarterback power. So, um, But it, it is a, it's another weapon, you know, and if it also keeps defenses honest. You know, if your defensive end is going to continue to bend then the quarterback pulls and he's on the edge and he's gaining first downs, well, then the defensive end has to stay outside and contain the quarterback. Well, then we can run the ball out and, and hand the ball off. Sometimes in our running game, our quarterback really is a blocker. He's responsible for a defender. If the defender is cheating and fitting in on the run, well, then his responsibility is to make make the defense be honest. And and, and that's really – Air did that a couple times today. And we had a block. The safety was sticking his face in there. So Air took off around the edge. What happens the next play? The defense is wider. Then what do we get to do? We get a chance to hand the ball off to the running back. Great. Coach, thank you so much for your time, and thank you for being a Buckeye. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. Hey, folks, just FYI, the press box is closing at four today. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have individual stats upstairs. Yes. Yes.